Today I want to cover a topic that pretty much no one talks about online, about trading journal. Now it's one thing to have a trading journal and it's a different thing to be getting results from it and to really improve your trading from your trading journal. I don't see people talk about this much online, something that people expect that when you keep a good journal you'll be getting good results and you'll be able to improve, but they don't really show you how or why it's not working when you have your journal set up but you're not getting the results you want to get from that journal. So we'll discuss that today. What's the trend? Welcome back to Thailand once again. Today I'm in Pattaya in near the beach. It's pretty cool. Uh, I like this hotel. I came here a few times during the year. And it's a good place to relax, a good place to be able to do videos. And I want to go back to doing videos. In the past month or so, I've been moving to a new apartment. It took a lot of my time. It was something that really was like a little bit tough in terms of, of organizing everything, making sure everything was fine. Then my mom was visiting Thailand too at the same time, so that took a lot of time as well. But let's get back to it and let's get into helping you get more results with your trading. By talking about why your trading journal that you have right now might not get you the good results you want from your trading journal. And the first reason why that might happen is because you're tracking too many things and you're not focusing on the stats that really help you improve and help you get better results. So I see people who want to track everything in their journal from when they enter to when they exit the time exactly. They want to be able to track um, what they thought about in the trade and that's all good like there's many things that have their impact here but there's many stats or figures that you might be tracking now that don't really produce any results like how many pips you got per trade um, all, all these things are not in my opinion necessary now what I thought I could do here to give you some advice and we really help you kind of track the right things is give you a list of things that you can track and that I suggest you track for your journal first of all your compliance level so how many percent of the time do you follow your plan on each trade? We all know that the less you follow your plan, so the less compliance level you have, the more likely you're gonna have to have bad results. That's just normal, right? You don't follow your plan, you have bad results. Now in the short term, that could be the opposite. You could have good results by not following your plan. But in the long term, right? in the long run, it's gonna be where if you don't follow your plan, you have bad results over the long term. So whenever you don't follow your plan on a trade, like you make a mistake, you do something that's not according to plan, it counts as a bad trade. You take the number of good trades you took, divide that by the number of trades you took overall for all your trades, including the bad ones, and do the ratio. Like you want to get this as higher as possible at the end of each month, and you want to be able to track this over the long term. See how that improves, see how that changes over time, and you'll be on your way to getting better results over time. Okay, so second thing to track is the target of your trades. So I, in my stats, classify between, let's say, my 1R, so my trades that go to a small take profit and my 3R, trades that go to a bigger take profit, I classify them to see which one works the best. Is there one that's more profitable? Is there one that wins too often, not often enough? Then I can see how to make it better next time. So track the target of your trade in terms of R's, is it 1R, 2R, 3R, or so on. And what I do is I can tag my trades with this. So I know I only have like one and three R. I can tag the trade with these numbers and I'll be able to filter by those after later. But for you could be just writing down how much R you're aiming for and then seeing as you increase in R as you are going down a lot or just a little bit and then you can see how to make it better over time. Third thing to track of course is the pairs you're trading. So you'll see over time that not all pairs perform the same. Some will give you much better results, some will give you really really bad results and some are going to be like in the middle. So profitable, unprofitable, break even and it's your job to filter them. You shouldn't be trading all the pairs that you find on your platform, that's just stupid. You can do this for a little bit of time, but eventually you have to filter out, you have to cut things out and only trade the pair that are proven to be profitable with your trading, with your strategy. And that's gonna be dependent on everyone. Everyone is different, you have your own strategy, so follow the pairs and trade the pair that work with your strategy. Again, in your journal, you should be able to filter by pair, see the stats for each pair, and pick the one that worked the best. Fourth thing you wanna track are your mistakes. Each time you make a mistake, you wanna write down what that mistake is. And the reason is simple is because we tend to repeat the same mistakes a lot of the time. Like most of the trades you make mistakes on, it's going to be the same few things that you repeat and that you have problems with. For example, closing your trades too early or not sitting at the right take profit, like keeping the trades longer. Or it could be something you place a stop loss wrong or you put your size wrong on the trade. All these things tend to repeat themselves and if we don't track them, it's going to be really hard to improve and remember them. So you want to be able to write them down so that you have a basis for how to improve and what mistakes do you have to fix right now in your trading. Again, it's not something fun, not something you would like to do, but something that gives you results. And that's the goal of any journals, to give you results over time and to improve your actual results right now. And a quick fifth thing to try here 
is this something with mixed results? So I do it sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't really give any results in anything useful. It's the time frame you trade. So what time frame do you take your trades on? Is the one hour chart, four hour chart, 30 minute chart, or so on. And this is good because, first of all, you get to see if you're better on any time frame you trade, and maybe worse on others. So you can see what time frame you're best at trading. If you have really good results in the four hour chart, but on the 30 minute chart, the one hour chart, you, you fail, you have bad results. It doesn't make sense to keep these time frames. Just go on the one that, that you're best at, the four hour chart, and you'll be good to go after. You have much better results. So I'll do this for my strategy when I trade two time frames, four hour chart, one hour chart. I can see how I perform different on these time frames. Sometimes the same, sometimes it's different. It varies, right? But overall, I'm still profitable on both time frames, which is good. Okay, so that's the first thing that we just covered and kind of went through is being able to track the right things and not too many things on your journal. Otherwise, if you track too many things, it's going to be really hard to keep focused and it's going to be hard to see what makes sense, what doesn't. And you're more likely to give up because it's too hard to do after some time. The second thing that makes a big difference in your journal, and I see people do this all the time, which makes it not work, is you're not reviewing it every month. Now, every month, take aside like an hour, 30 minutes, whatever works for you. Go back on your journal, see all your trades you've taken for that month. And see your results, like not your individual trades, but your statistics. See what's your win rate for that month. What's your average win? Uh, what are your stats that you need to be able to focus on? What's your compliance level, which we just talked about recently? These things are helpful because they help you see how you perform. It's a bigger picture view of things, and you're not like so focused on did I win this trade, did I lose this trade? You focus more on the big picture view of things, and that's good. So many people keep a big journal, like a big advanced stats, but they never review them. Like they never go back and see how they perform. How is that useful? It's just not useful at all. So at the end of the month, go back to your journal, see what you did well, not well, how can you improve, and make a plan for improving next month. Really big step here. And finally, my last point here in the video is something that is really, really key, and I'll give you a solution at the end of the video here. You stop your journal when things go well. And that's something I've done for a long time myself, is I used the journal really hard when things were not good, when my results in trading were bad, when I had some, some mistakes, when I felt bad about it. But once when things started to get good and I was getting good results and good profit, I stopped journaling for some time. I was like, well, that's that's not needed. Like, I'm good now, I can do it, I'm, I'm fine. No need to journal. And I found out, of course, by a result of that, is that you need to keep your journal when you're doing good anyway. Because cutting that journal when you do good is what causes you to go bad again and to have bad results again. If you keep the same habits all the time, if you keep the same journaling habits for the long term, no matter if it's good or bad or, or, or whatever happens, then you're more likely to be able to improve. And you'll be able to keep getting that feedback for your trading. See how things are going, when things start to go a little bit less good, you can tweak things a little bit, adjust some parts of your trading to make it good again. And that's something that most people, again, don't do. Like they stop when things go well, they think they don't need it anymore, and they think they can just go to um, kind of cutting down on journaling a little bit, doing things on an easier way, like a shortcut, a faster way, and that leads them to going back again the cycle of having bad results. So you need to be doing this day in, day out, when it's good, when it's bad, no matter what happens. Keep your journal, keep it there so that you can have a feedback loop and you're able to improve your trading whenever things come up and happens. Because even if things go perfectly well, you have like really good results, the best results you've had ever in trading, you will still make mistakes sometimes. And we need to get that journaling to catch them and improve on them in the future. Now, if you've been watching this so far and you would like to get more info and you would like to go deeper on that topic of journaling with me, I'm hosting a free training this weekend about the three major secrets before you get into a pro firm challenge. We'll discuss things you gotta do before you take a challenge from a pro firm, before you try to get funded, so that you don't lose the funding. Things that pretty much no one talks about again and that makes a big difference on your results. As people who take these pro firm challenges try to get funded all the time, but they fail, because they have the wrong things in place before the challenge. It's not just about what you do in the challenge, right? It's about what you do before the challenge. Journaling is a big part of it. We'll discuss that more in detail, as well as other things. And if you want to sign up, I'll leave a link below for you to sign up below the video. If you arrive after the event is done, so after the next weekend, you'll still be sent to one of my free training by clicking the link below. And you can still watch it, get some advice from it, and improve your training on a much bigger level. So this is out, hope that was useful for you. And I'll catch you back here in the next video pretty soon. Ciao.